All right, it's your boy Mixmaster B here for MMB Radio, the online podcast where no topic is too big or too small. And right now, I have a gentleman on the phone lines that you may have seen in different super villain roles, such as Lex Luthor in Batman vs. Superman. He's a certified personal trainer. He's trained some of the most acclaimed MMA stars, the bad boy of adult, Mr. Derek Pierce. How are you? What up, brother? What's going on with you tonight? You good? Yeah, I'm sorry if my, my background is, is a little a little noisy. I'm in my, my monster truck and I'm going back to the to the gym actually. <laughs> well that goes with the whole persona here. You got the bad boy of adult and uh uh, is this this is interesting for me because we've never had like an adult male talent on the uh, podcast. So all the ladies out there, and, and maybe possibly even some of the guys, this is a uh, early holiday treat for them. Um, but we kind of I get that a lot. I get that a lot. A lot of the podcasts I do, they're like, you're the first guy we've had on. I'm like, well, lucky me. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, it's it was we wanted to get you on a while back. And I, I fucked up. Yeah. I had a total mind fart. And, like, you're calling, you're leaving voicemails like, hey, it's Derek. And I'm like, who the fuck is this guy calling me? <laughs> He's saying, got the wrong damn number. Yeah, and I even, like, sent a message back. I'm like, dude, I don't know who the fuck you are, but you got the wrong number, you know? <laughs> but, um, so we want to talk about a lot of different things tonight. Um, first things first, of, like I said, you are a certified fitness trainer, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I've got a couple of different certs. I'm working on my NASM cert right now, which is kind of like the the uh, the staple of the industry. If you're not a kinesiology major uh, or have a, a normal BA degree, the other one or BS, um, and it's not the bullshit. Say, I have plenty <laughs> of BS degrees. Side. I got a gang of those too. They're all in crayon. Um, but um, the other one will be a CSCS. Uh, degree, which is basically a strength conditioning coach. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's a big, thick book, and I'd be learning good, so I got to study a lot. So what came first, being a, a fitness instructor or being an adult male star? <laughs> um, God, you know, it still feels weird to hear when people say adult male star or porn star. I don't, I don't, I don't call myself that. Other people do, and, and my ego thanks you. Um, but yeah, I've been involved in fitness for the majority of my life. Um, uh, ever since I was, I was an early teenager, uh, track and field and stuff like that. And, um, then from there, um, I've been on a collegiate world team for taekwondo and medal at multiple, uh, uh, national, uh, competitions for U.S. national team, stuff like that. Been to team trials at OTC and, all that. So I've kind of been involved in fitness way before porn, but I've been sport fucking for years. <laughs> now, how, how did that come about, like getting into the business? Because a lot of guys, they always say, how can I get into business? How can I get into business? And a lot yeah. of them want to get in for all the wrong reasons. Well, I, I mean, I guess the wrong reasons. Like, you know, they're not in it to, like, to actually perform. They're just, you know, just want to get laid. But how, how did you, this come to your way? Well, I kind of, uh, you know, I kind of fell into it by accident. I was dating a girl who had just started in the business. She was on doing girl, girl. Um, uh, she wasn't really like the most social person you might say. So, you know, I'm have a tendency to be very social. And so I was kind of meeting people with her and stuff like that. And after about a year of her being in the business, she was like, you need to get in this business. And so I started kind of poking my nose around and, you know, like, Hey, you know, I want to learn camera, I want to learn lighting, you know, like back end stuff. And, you know, there's no director that's going to pull you under the lane. They're like, listen, let me show you how to do my job. You can take my money. Um, and so people kept offering me jobs as talent. And they're like, well, are you talented? Are you talent in this business? I'm like, no, I'm the pervert that watches this shit. I jerk off this shit at home, man. <laughs> you know? And uh, so I, it's around the third or fourth time I was offered a spot. I, I talked to my girl at the time about it. I'm like, listen, nobody wants to hire me to teach teach me how to hold the camera, but everybody wants to hire me for, for talent. And she's like, um, no, you're not fucking girls for a living. Sorry. And uh, so we kind of went back and forth and she was like, well, can you do it? And I'm like, shit, I don't know. You know, like everybody thinks they can do this job until somebody goes, okay, whip it out, fucker, let's go. And then like, you know, the shit gets real. You know what I mean? It's it's like watching an MMA fight or a boxing fight, and you're like, oh, he should have just slipped the jab. 
Oh, he should have sprawled instead of getting taken down. We'll hop your ass into the cage then, smart ass. And so that's kind of what happened. And um, I knew enough people where, you know, I got a, I got an opportunity to do it. And I pretty much lied. Like, I didn't tell the guy who owned the company that I had never shot before. I may or may not have told him I had been shooting content for somebody else. And he was like, oh, I know them. So I texted him real quick, like, listen, if anybody calls and asks, I've totally been shooting content for you. And um, I, so I lied my way out of my first porn set, and I basically, you know, kind of fake it till you make it. And uh, the first scene went really well. And that director wrote something about me on something called Porn Star Performance. And I've been shooting ever since. Now, you said your girlfriend at the time, I'm assuming, you, are you with her still or not with her? Or? No, no, that was, that was many, many kitties ago. Now, she says to you, no, you're not going to fuck girls on camera, but, like, in retrospect, she's kind of fucking dudes on camera, so... Well, she, she was only doing girl-girl, though. Oh, okay, so she was just doing girl-girl at the time. Yeah, and that was of her own accord, you okay. know what I mean? Like, that, that wasn't my decision, that was hers. Okay, so you started off, and what is what do you think is one of the biggest hurdles in the porn business? Like being a guy, you, you, I mean, you see so many of the same guys in porn. Why is this? Same reason why you see the same dudes on on professional sports. You know what I mean? Like if you dumb it down to lowest common denominator, right? And you take a new sport like MMA, and I use that as a as a uh, model because I'm familiar with it. Um, you've seen the same guys for so long, right? Only the last couple of years it's kind of opened up. You know, why is that? Well, because the talent pool is very small and a lot of guys that think they can do this job can't, you know, and, and it's, it's, it, it's just a, it, it's a tough thing to do. You know, like if you get involved into mainstream uh, entertainment, right? I mean, you have to have a certain amount of skill to be an actor, for sure. I don't think it's that easy. I think it's a difficult craft. But more than anything else, I think you have to have, again, no pun intended, staying power, right? Like, I mean, you know, you got to be able to do the job, right? You got to, day in, day out, year in, year out, you got to go to auditions, you got to have thick skin, you can't let things get to you. And that's kind of what it takes to be a male performer, except we do what actors do, but we do it with our clothes off. So, you know, you can't, you can't fake a hard on, you can fake some tears if you're on camera, right? But you can't fake a hard dick. There's just no two ways about it. For a girl to have a successful career in this business outside of being, you know, just a good female talent. I mean, come on, man. You, you, you gotta know how to fake an orgasm and have a bottle of lube. Like that's, that's, that's it. You know, if you can do those two things and you can take dick, you can be a female performer, ultimately. I mean, it is more complicated than that, but that's the basics of it. But with a dude, you can't fake a hard dick. You can't fake a pop chop. Well, you can, but you can't do it all the time. <laughs> you know, so yeah, gotcha. eventually you got to show and prove. And that's why you see the same guys over and over again. It's not that Brazzers wants to only hire three, four, five different guys. It's not that Wicked and Hustler and Penthouse want to hire the same 10 guys. They just, they don't have an option. You know, the options are not there. And why would you risk thousands of dollars on a single shoot for a guy who might be able to do the job? Now, one of the things I also noted here was that you, you, you are always being casted to play the, the evil super villain in a lot of oh, these yeah. comic book parodies. And one of the oh, reasons yeah. probably is because you have the, the fighting background, so you do a lot of your own choreography. But uh, how familiar are you with a lot of these uh, characters or roles? Are you a big comic book fan, or did you just kind of like, hey, well, fuck it, it's a gig, and I'm going to take it? Yes, on both accounts. But the first thing is, you know, the irony is the fight stuff really doesn't come out in the comic book stuff. It's come out in other stuff. The the reason why I keep getting cast as as the supervillains or the, the antiheroes, whatever, is because I'm big. Like, I mean, I'm not a small person. I'm six feet tall and 215 pounds. And I'm bald, so you never have to worry about my hair. You know what I mean? And I can wear all the outfits, and I'm usually bigger than the hero counterparts, which they always want the bad guys to be bigger, right? And Or at least the same size. And 
so that's why I get these roles. So like when I did the first, the first one, which technically was star Wars, um, you know, they were able to put a certain outfit on me and it like sold because they could do whatever they want to me. My, my head and my face are kind of like a blank canvas, you know? And then, um, and then I did the, the Deadpool role, which was a given. And the Deadpool role was the one that really got me started on comic books. Um, I had a friend of mine, Eli Cross, who's another very, very well-known director. And he said, listen, um, I want to put you as Deadpool. The role is perfect for you. And I was like, it's fucking math, dude. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't know how perfect it can be. You can't see my face. You're perfect. But... You know, Deadpool, I, I learned, so I really wasn't that familiar with him. Like, I knew the character, right? But I had no idea about his backstory. And I got to tell you, Deadpool is the coolest motherfucker on the planet. Uh, you can keep Superman, Spider-Man, Black Panther. I, the list goes down the line. Gaz, Green Lantern, I don't care. <laughs> Deadpool is the coolest motherfucker on the planet. You, you say Gaz, Green Lantern. Who do you think is Come the on, weakest? Come on, nobody likes Green Lantern. Who, well, that's what I'm going to ask. Who do you think is the weakest superhero ever? Damn. I mean, what, what are we talking? Are we talking Marvel? Are we We're talking, talking you know, all spectrums? Just period? Any, any, ah. any superhero at all. I already, I already like, have I would, my answer. Okay, I would, uh, I would go back to, like, like old school cartoon Justice League, and it would be like the Wonder Twins. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I think you may have topped me on that. I was going to say Aquaman, but Wonder Twins, yeah, I totally forgot all about them. Like, but that's how far back I have to go, you know. Aquaman, meh, at least he's got some power in the sea, right? Like, I mean, uh, I'll run with him and his trident only when there's water involved. But the Wonder Twins, you do too, fruitcake. Get out of here. <laughs> so, you, 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 like I said, you're big on MMA, and you've trained a lot of MMA stars. And you recently did the uh, Ronda Rousey parody, Ronda Arouse Me. <laughs> What was, yeah. what was like that, being able to take both of your loves and kind of putting it together? Well, you know, the funny thing, well, first off, um, Chloe Valentine is fucking smoking hot. Yes, she is. I, I, I mean, see. like, just, you, I mean, I would do triple takes if I just saw her walking. Like, forget <laughs> about porn, right? Like, she's a badass woman right there. Um, and, and second off, as cool as that one was, that wasn't actually, uh, I mean, I did their fight choreography, but it was really not, it was, you know, I'm working with two girls that have never done anything like that before. So it was like, uh, you know, what can you, can you do this? Can you do that? Can you do this? Okay. Roll it together. It's not that big of a deal. I did a movie called tough love where, uh, a girl named Adriana Luna was my female star. And I trained Jessica Drake for like four months for that movie. And we did a full on female underground MMA fight movie. And it was right when Rhonda was having her very first fight. And I timed it that way on purpose. And it did really, really, really well. And the girls were amazing in the movie. They did such a good job. Uh, but the, the Rhonda aroused me thing, it was kind of uh, surreal for me because I, I uh, originally, when Rhonda was an amateur, we trained at the same place. So I know her. I mean, we're not like buddies buddies or anything but if she saw me she knew who i am and i know who she is in that regard um so i knew her when she was barely getting started in her amateur career so to kind of like and i always thought she was hot and uh and and most of the guys at the gym were like don't talk to Rhonda because you're you do porn <laughs> stay you away up. from Rhonda. <laughs> and i was like what did i do i didn't do anything i never even asked her out nothing and they're like don't talk to Rhonda. um but uh, so it's kind of funny to be like, kind of like in a very roundabout way, fucking Rhonda, you know, aroused me. You know what I mean? That was kind of funny to me. It gave, gave me a chuckle a couple of times throughout the day. Now, speaking of the whole MMA stuff, I mean, a lot was being made from UFC 194 with uh, Conor McGregor with 13 seconds yeah. and uh, Jose yeah. Aldo. Like, what, what was your uh, reaction to that? Well, you know, I've watched Conor for a while. And I've been a Jose Aldo fan for a long time. I was I was uh, I was cornering um, Manny Gamburian and um, Karin Darvidian and WEC when Jose knocked out uh, Cub in like eight seconds. He like ran across the ring and like jumping double kneed him in the face, and the fight was over. 
I look back to talk to somebody and I look back again and the fight was over. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait hold on. What the, what the fuck just happened? I had to watch it on the replay in San Jose. So I watched Jose for a long time. I prepped um, videos for Manny Gamburian when Manny fought Jose. And I told Manny then, don't fight him. It's, this is not the fight for you right now, bro. Like, this guy is amazing. You know, you don't understand. I never really broke down his fights before until Manny was going to fight him. And I'm like, this, this guy, he kicks without motion. He, you know, there's no tells when he, when he throws it. it it's going to be rough for you. Please don't take this fight. Manny was like, too late, fucker. I already saw him. But um, so I've watched Jose for a long time, and I think he is the man. But I've also watched Connor, and man, if he lacked anything on on a technical side, which I haven't really seen him lack anything yet, he makes up for it with with confidence and presence. And you might not be able to match Jose Aldo technique for technique, but you can out train for him. And I think if that fight had continued to go on, I think Connor would have beat him either way. You know, I, I, I think that he's kind of like the, the, the new breed in, in that, um, in that weight class for sure. And, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if he does really well at 155 either. I mean, it's a, it's a much taller division, right? But I mean, the guy is the business. I, I think after watching that fight, I realize, at least in my opinion, Conor McGregor is a student of fight science. Because he had said in a previous interview, Jose Aldo overcommits and he and he leans in too much. And I'm going to catch him when he overcommits and he extends. This was like, I don't know, like a month or two ago. And sure as shit, the first time Jose did it, he clipped him. Mm-hmm. Lucky shot? I don't know. I don't think so. I think he trained for it. I think that wasn't a lucky shot. I think that he did exactly what he thought he was going to do. I think he did it faster than he realized he was going to do it, though. He did it faster than I thought he was going to do it. I mean, I was <laughs> I was kind of pulling for it because I just, you know, it's the guy's whole confidence and, you know, the whole swag and everything. It's just like it's Absolutely. hard to not, you know, become an instant fan. And uh, I was just blown away. I was like, oh, shit, it's over? <laughs> yeah, right. So. And, and I kind of jumped. I had, a, I had a bunch of people over the house, and I was just like, ooh, ooh. It was dead silent, boy. I was like, I told you he was going to win. And I had a friend who does jiu-jitsu um, that I'd known for a long time. And he's like, oh, Connor, blah, blah, blah. And he's not giving him his props. I'm like, dude, you can't fault this kid for knocking him out. It's not his fault. You know what I mean? You can't take away his thunder because he KO'd the champ. Mm-hmm. That's, no, that's no, impressive on its own mark. But I think that they should have a rematch at some say, point in time. Do you, do you think it, that he's worthy of a, ro- uh, a, a, a rematch? I'm going to say a romance there. Um, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> do you think he's worthy of a romance? But um, no. Um, do you, so you, yeah, you think that I they should have he's a worthy of a rematch? Yeah. Okay. Cause, Absolutely. Because uh, Joe but Rogan was saying that, that you know if you're knocked out in 13 seconds, how do you justify you know that you he should has have a, a rematch? He, he has a point, and I was going to say, but I think that he should have to have at least one fight before he gets another crack at Connor. Okay. I was going to say because, but I don't we, think that'll be good for fans. I think fans want to see. Jose fight Connor and have a knockdown drag out war because I think everybody knows that Connor will not back down. Mm-hmm. You know, and and I also think that a lot of people are forgetting Jose's almost got his ass handed to him on like one or two of the last fights that he's had. Mm-hmm. You know, he if if he goes past three rounds, I don't know, he doesn't have the cardiovascular ability to, to keep up. Well, I Connor think seems to get better. Well, I think you and me are both in agreement that, like you said, no matter had that fight that fight gone longer than 13 seconds, I still think Connor would have prevailed. So knowing knowing that, um, like I said, I don't I, I don't think he deserves a rematch right away. But like you said, from a marketing standpoint, I can see where that would be, you know, the ideal right. thing to do. But um, yeah, for sure. So getting getting back to your, your porn career, um, got a couple questions. We got a couple questions from fans that tweeted some stuff in, and yeah, um, yeah. always one of the questions we always get is they want to know what type of scenes do you enjoy shooting? Do you really have a preference, and how does that go about? Uh, you know what? I well, okay. I happen to be a little more on the aggressive side. And so I obviously prefer a scene where they say, do whatever you guys are cool with and we'll film it. You know what I mean? Like, those are awesome days. But um, 
I do a lot of BDSM stuff, which I do actually enjoy. Um, and I don't know. I just, I like scenes that have something to them. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I do cookie cutter scenes all the time, you know, that are like, listen, it's, you know, big tits, round ass. Okay. Uh, let's see, you're coming home from work and it's your wife and she's going to blow you in front of the dishwasher. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, those are all fine and dandy, but if I get an opportunity to connect with somebody and to really like, kind of like go for it, those are the scenes I really like. Now, who is, who is someone that you have, you feel you have the best chemistry with? adult star wise I don't know about best chemistry but I certainly have chemistry with Jessica Drake Jessica and I do it seems like every time we work together the scene actually gets better I don't know if it gets better for everybody else but it damn sure gets better for me <laughs> I think a lot um, of guys envy you with that Jessica is a real woman boy I mean let me tell you that girl knows exactly what she wants and exactly how she wants it and not afraid to ask for it the scene we did for Magic Mike was phenomenal. In my opinion, it's the best scene that Jessica and I have ever done. And we've done, you know, a dozen plus scenes by now, I guess. Um, but I, I dig Jessica. I, I like um, Phoenix Marie and I always have great chemistry with our friends for a multitude of years. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to think of other girls. Uh, uh, push her. Uh, Mercedes Carrera, wow, that girl's got a look, boy. I mean, I have to like start counting sheep and shit to not come. <laughs> well, it's worth noting too that you you, match, you you mentioned the Magic Mike Triple XL scene in the movie that you did, and it's uh, you're nominated for a bunch of AVN awards. So you got Best yeah. Actor, Best Actor Parody Release, Best Scene. Um, how many of these awards do you expect to walk away with that night in January? Oh. And yet yeah, doesn't really give me love like that. Like, I mean, I think they're a great entity. Um, I I don't really typically win AVN awards. Um, I think I've won two in nine years, and I'm nominated every year. And I'm never nominated for Performer of the Year. <laughs> now, does <laughs> it, that bother it's you? Or... To draw. You or know what? It really did. It, it did. Now I'm just kind of, I, I'm kind of self-dubbing myself the, the Leonardo DiCaprio of porn. <laughs> like, I just keep doing epic movies, and they keep telling me to fuck off. And I keep doing more epic movies, and they keep telling me to keep trying. You that, know? That's a good and, analogy, though, because Leonardo DiCaprio seems to get more ass than anybody in real life. So, And, and here yeah, you are. You're, mean, you're getting to fuck girls like Jessica Drake. So, you know. You know, not, I, not bad. Leonardo DiCaprio is an amazing actor. And does, I mean, you know, you talk about epic movies of all time, right? Like, the guy is in a lot of those movies. You know, any any awards? Not so much. <laughs> but the movies are amazing, right? So I just kind of regulated myself to the to the DiCaprio porn, I guess, and and, and I'm okay with that. AVN is a, is a really really good entity. I have a couple friends that work there, and you know they put out some quality stuff. Xbiz is amazing. I have a bunch of uh, a bunch of uh, uh, nominations at Xbiz as well. Um, I've won some some good awards from them. I mean. In my heart of hearts, I really believe that the Magic Mike movie is, is really good, and uh, it's done really well in sales, and I think that uh, 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 act, uh, you know, Best Actor Award is, is in line with that movie, but you never know. You know what I mean? You never know. Now, another fan, he tweets in, he wants to know, and you may have already kind of answered some of this, but... Who are your top three adult stars of all time, whether you worked with them or not worked with them, like just being a fan of them in general? Okay. Fan in general. I, I would have to, again, make it throwback, you know, to, to the times, you know, when I used to, like, jerk off to shit on VHS because that's how fucking old I am. Um, there were no were no computer laptop porn. Um, um, one of them was... Uh, a black girl named Ebony Ace, or Aries, Ace, something like that, had big ass titties. And she always, always wanted to fuck her. Um, and Seika, like, that was even before my time. But I remember how excited I got when, when um, Seika followed me on Twitter. 
I was like, that is I was like oh my awesome, gosh, shut the it? fuck up. They could just follow me. Get the fuck out. I was super giddy about it. I was like, bitch, I will fuck you. What are you, 50? I'm down. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't care. Um, and uh, Asia Carrera. Okay. Those are like, like all times, right? Like those girls were, mm. but then you, you, you know, it's, it's really hard to like knuckle it, knuckle it down to those because Jesse Jane, I love Jesse Jane. Jesse Jane they have like, I, like, I, like, I just, Yeah. I saw her exotic and I just see her and I'm just like, I just like, I just melt when I see her. So I, I can definitely. Yeah. Her. Right. And I've done scenes with Jesse before, you know, so it, it, it's, it's a little bit uh, surreal in, in that regard. Um, yeah, like those kind of girls. So that's um, like your, your male fuck more of girls right there. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I want to talk about, you have a fitness blog, so I want you to, to tell me a little bit about that. Where can people find out, and what can they find out on this fitness blog? Um, okay, so my fitness blog is uh, Fitness Innovation Training, uh, and it's on Tumblr. You can just type that into Tumblr, uh, or it's on my Instagram, which is and it's, it's in my profile. Um, uh, and so, you know, um, my PR people, Tanya and, and, uh, and them, they were like, D, you need to start writing, you know? And I'm like, what the fuck you want me to write about? And they're like, well, if you want, you know, fitness, you know, to take you seriously, then you need to write. And I'm like, oh, right. So... <laughs> I, I got injured about four months ago, which off air we were talking about, you know, the fact that I was just in therapy. And even though I have mental problems, I wasn't in therapy for those. Um, it's, it's for my back. And I, I basically have a bulging disc, blah, blah, blah. Everybody has them these days. But um, so what I started doing was I started writing a fitness blog about, you know, being fit in 40. Because I'm 41. And what it takes, you know what I mean? Because, like, when I was fighting, I was, I think I retired at, like, 30, 29 or 30, right? And my last national team, my collegiate world team, was 28. And I remember I I won, I, I placed at, at, at uh, nationals, and I broke my foot at, at, at nationals. I bowed out of semifinals. That's all I needed to do was get top four to go to team trials. <clears throat> I then turned around and did a pro league, uh, a training camp pro league for, for Taekwondo for seven days in Maine. And I trained on a broken foot every day, three times a day, and just iced it in between training. That's just what you did, right? Because I was, like, fucking 28. Now, if I get a hangnail, I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, I can't get out of bed. You know? <laughs> because, comes with age. Because, yeah, right? Like, you know, it's funny because I used to work with my fighters, and, you know, one of my guys would be like, oh, my shoulder's jacked up, you know? They were doing I'm a blot then. The guy went too far. I didn't tap. Oh, you know, I, my jaw hurts because somebody elbowed me in the jaw. And I'm like, yeah, my shoulder hurts. My back hurts. My knee hurts. And they're like, damn, what would you do? And I'm like, I woke up. <laughs> I went to the bathroom and came back, to, you know, went back to bed. Oh, uh, I tell you what, man. Sometimes if I, if I have a girl, you know, to come home with me the night before, I'm a champ. Like that night, I am the man. Like I will break a bitch off. And if they happen to stay the night in the morning, I am an old fucking has been trying to get to the bathroom before I pee on myself <laughs> because it is a slow creep to the toilet, my friend. Now, now you also have the website uh, bangingpornstars.com, which is your official website. Yeah. And um, yeah. what <laughs> kind of take us through that, like the journeys of uh, bangingpornstars.com. What can people find on there? So I wanted a site where, even though it happens to be all me at this time, I wanted a site that could if I wanted to develop into something else. And, you know, people always ask me, fans, friends, whatever, they always ask me, like, D, you know, do you, you guys you guys fuck around off camera? And I'm like, yeah, sometimes, right? And uh, what's that like? And I'm like, I, I can't really tell everybody the stories, right? Because some of the shit I'm just not going to cop to. Like, you know, did you fuck so-and-so? Nope. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and so I don't really tell them. But I was like, yo, you guys really want to know what happens off camera? Okay, cool. So I made a site that is like off-camera antics, but obviously there's a camera. And so sometimes, you know, like I said, if, if, if it's a girl I've just really wanted to fuck for a while, and maybe she has a man or something like that, and she's like, ah, I can't fucking message work-related. 
all right, then guess what? You're hired, bitch. Let's go. Now <laughs> suck my dick. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cameras and I'm going to record it. Yeah, and now I'm just going to record it exactly the way it happened. And I'll uh, hold my GoPro and have uh, my, my buddy Ivan on, on his camera and be like, okay, so <laughs> Jessica said we can't fuck off camera. This is the camera. Suck my dick. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And it's that trivial. And it's like the little text messages between us and all that kind of shit. The stuff that, you know, may or may not really happen off camera, I'm just recording. That's all. It's simple. Well, I can say myself and a lot of other guys out there envy the shit out of you because, you know, when we try to do sites like this, you know, we're getting subpoenas and, you know, we're getting lawyers and all kinds of other crazy shits going on. So, um, yeah, these guys can they can live through you and they can head on over to bangingpornstars.com. Uh, Derek, we appreciate you calling in and talking to us and you can follow him on Twitter at the D Pierce and anything you want the fans to know before you leave. Um, sign up for my blog. Read that stuff. If you guys got fitness questions, hit me up on Instagram. You know, I'm happy to answer those things. Uh, I think my email's on there too. You know, um, if you ask me how to get into the business, chances of me answering you are next to none, unless you're a really attractive female and have big ass titties. Um, outside of that, no, nah, man. Like, you know, catch me on social media. I do my best to answer. You know, everybody's questions. Sometimes they get backlogged, but. Hang in there. I will get to you if you have a legit question. Now, you know, one follow-up question, one last question before we go, because you, you mentioned yeah. that if you're, if you're really hot, then you would, you know, talk to them. What fitness female would you would like to <laughs> bring into the, the, the adult world? Okay, so, so um, Dolly Castro on Instagram is, like, my wife, right? Mm -hmm. She doesn't know that she's my wife. <laughs> she doesn't even know I fucking exist. But fuck you, bitch. You're married to me now. You and I think you might be Colombian. I'm not sure. I really don't care. You're stupid attractive. And I would, like, fucking wife the hell out of you. She's so hot. That's, that's my Instagram fitness. I don't even think she works out. Like, if you go look at her Instagram, she barely lifts a weight. I don't even care. I don't even care. I don't care if your ass is fake. I don't. I really just want to lay my head on it. I could definitely vouch with that. Dolly Castro, and I, and I have to say, just to put it out there, Paige Hathaway. I have to get Paige. Oh, yeah. Started. See, I was going to say Paige, too, but uh, I know she has a man. And so, Dolly, I think she has a man, but I'm living in the same fantasy world that a lot of the porn watchers are living in. I'm just going to accept the fact that she doesn't have a man and pretend that I have a shot. There you go. You got a better shot than most of us. So we appreciate you uh, <laughs> calling in and talking to us a little bit. And uh, we hope to hear big things coming from you real soon. And congratulations on all the nominations for AVN and XBiz. And uh, we hope that you bring some of those awards home. Uh, me too. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate the love. Not a problem. Have a great night. All right. Hey, what's up? This is Derek Pierce, and you're listening to Mixmaster B on MMB.